Hello and welcome to this GCSE Chemistry explanation video about wastewater treatment. We'll start by looking at what wastewater actually is and where wastewater is produced. Then we'll explore the wastewater treatment itself, making sure that we're really clear about how and why we do each step. And we'll finish by looking at how this topic could be explored in an exam situation. Human activities use lots of water. And once these activities have been carried out, the water that we were using is considered to be wastewater. And wastewater comes from all sorts of different places. For instance, in our homes, we have got toilet waste, bath water, washing up water, anything that we put down our drains. And we've also got agricultural sources of wastewater. And so this mainly is farming and anything to do with farming. For instance, runoff from fields, which might include animal waste, sometimes referred to as slurry, or fertilisers and pesticides. We've also got industrial sources of wastewater, and typically we're referring to factories here, and factories might have all manner of different harmful chemicals that they end up releasing down their drain system. And so we need to make sure that this wastewater is safe before we release it into the environment, otherwise this might cause harm. And the main substances that are removed from all types of wastewater include insoluble solids and organic matter. And the different types of wastewater can also contain other substances, and these require further stages of treatment. And so wastewater has to be treated before it can be put back into rivers or lakes or the sea, because otherwise it could pollute them and could cause health problems. Wastewater treatment occurs in a sewage plant, and there are four main stages to wastewater treatment. And the first stages are to remove the insoluble solids. The first of these stages is called screening and grit removal. And this involves passing the wastewater through a series of metal grids or grills. And this removes the large pieces of insoluble solids. And so this might be twigs or grit or anything, plastic bags maybe. And we have a decreasing size hole to these grills because that will allow progressively smaller pieces of insoluble solid to be removed by the screening process. And then the water passes through into something called a sedimentation tank. And the water is left to stand in this tank and the small particles of suspended solid are more dense than the water, and so over time, these will sink to the bottom and settle. And this builds up more and more over time, and the solid forming at the bottom becomes thicker and thicker, and it becomes referred to as something called a, a sewage sludge. And then the less dense liquid will stay at the top of this sedimentation tank, and these two parts are referred to as the sewage sludge at the bottom and the effluent, which is the liquid that is at the top. And then the solid and the liquid are separated and treated in different ways. The effluent flows out of the sedimentation tank and into a second tank where there are bacteria added to the effluent. And air is pumped through this tank, which is stirred, and the bacteria break down organic matter in the effluent in a process called aerobic digestion. Aerobic means the digestion is taking place in the presence of oxygen. And so this organic matter is broken down, and this will include other microbes that might have caused harm. And once that process has happened over a matter of time, the water is then tested, and if it has been deemed to be safe, it will then be pumped out of this tank into a river or a lake or the sea. Meanwhile, the sewage sludge that deposited during sedimentation is moved into a different tank. And there are bacteria added to this chamber as well, but really importantly, no oxygen. And so the bacteria use anaerobic digestion to break down the organic matter that is in the sludge. And anaerobic digestion means that there is no oxygen present for this process. 
As a result of this process, we release methane gas. And this methane gas can be burned, and so it's really useful as an energy source. And the remaining digested solid waste also has a use. It can be dried out and used as a fertiliser and spread onto fields to help the crops grow. Some types of wastewater also contains other toxic substances. For instance, sewage and agricultural wastewater will require the removal of organic matter and harmful microbes or pathogens. And this is usually done in a separate chamber where the water is subjected to ultraviolet radiation. Industrial wastewater may require the removal of organic matter and harmful chemicals. And these chemicals might have come from pesticides or from fertilisers, or there might be some metal ions that are dissolved in the wastewater. One way that we can remove these dissolved metal ions is to add a chemical to them to produce a precipitate, which is an insoluble solid. And you will have done a reaction in test tubes where you mix two solutions together and a solid forms. And this solid is what we call a precipitate. And you can remove this solid precipitate from the liquid by filtering it out. And that can be done to wastewater. We can remove these metal ions by precipitation and then filter them out. Sometimes we use membranes to remove tiny solid particles from the wastewater and these membranes have got really, really small holes in them, small enough for the water molecules to pass through, but not these tiny solid particles. And this is a process known as microfiltration. This diagram shows how the stages of wastewater treatment all connect together. And so firstly, the wastewater is added here and it passes through the first metal grid with quite large holes between the wires. And then it moves out of this grid, having lost some of the larger solid samples trapped here because it was too big to pass through the holes. And then at the next metal grid with smaller holes, we would remove some of the medium sized bits of solid. And then through the final metal grid with really small holes, some of the small pieces of solid will have been trapped and removed. And from there, the wastewater moves into the sedimentation tank where the solid will settle and we'll get the sludge that forms at the bottom of the tank and the effluent will be the liquid that stays on the top. And so the sludge will move out of the tank into the anaerobic digestion chamber and that will be the bacteria digesting that sludge without oxygen. And that produces the methane gas, which can be used as a fuel. And then the sludge remains can be dried and used as fertilizer. And that will be taken off to farms. Meanwhile, the effluent is removed from the sedimentation tank. And that is moved through to a chamber which is left exposed to the air and this contains bacteria that will break down the organic matter by aerobic digestion. So that's digestion with oxygen. And so oxygen is bubbled through this chamber and it's left exposed to air. And then from here, the treated effluent moves to another chamber. And it's in this chamber that it might be treated with UV radiation. And that will kill some of the pathogens that have not yet been treated. And then the finally, the wastewater is deemed safe to be released and it is pumped out into the water system. And most wastewater that's been treated is released into rivers or lakes or seas. However, some wastewater can actually be used directly as a source of potable water. In an exam situation, you might be required to compare the use of different water sources and weigh up the pros and cons. Now, obviously, availability is a factor here, but the processes themselves for treating the different types of water are different. And so fresh water is the preferred source of potable water because it involves the fewest stages. We are just doing the filtration to remove the insoluble solids and sterilization to kill the pathogens. And because there are the fewest stages, this process takes the least time and it involves the least equipment and it uses the least energy. 
If we get our potable water from salt water, we still need to do filtration and sterilization, but this will require an additional stage because we need to remove the sodium chloride from the water in the process of desalination. And this will require either distillation or reverse osmosis to be carried out. And both of these processes require a large amount of energy. Crucially, they require more energy than either of the other two methods of water treatment. And so this method of getting potable water is likely to be only used if we really have to. And for instance, if we have a large amount of seawater easy to access. Wastewater treatment requires many more processes than the other two, and so as a result of that, it takes more time because we need to carry out the screening, the sedimentation, and then the aerobic digestion and the anaerobic digestion. And because we're dealing with a large volume of wastewater that needs different methods of treatment within the overall process, we need a large treatment plant to carry this out. And so this becomes more expensive because of the different stages and it does use more energy than we use for freshwater treatment. But because our highest temperature that we reach is likely to be only 40 degrees because we're using bacteria to digest the organic matter, this will be a much lower operating temperature than distillation in order to desalinate the salt water. And so we don't use as much energy as the seawater treatment. And so even though it might seem unpleasant, it is a viable alternative if we have areas with limited access to fresh water. Okay, that's the end of this video. I hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.